Hello and welcome to another 10 ton potato. Today I'm joined by Craig Tor. Hi, Say hi everyone. Craig. Uh, and we just found this random person on our podcast, uh, San Francisco based. So he was pitching a tent in the middle of podcast land. Good to be here. Can, can you technically see, say San Francisco based? Because it doesn't seem like he's ever there. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm home more often than people think, but, uh, but I do take about one trip a month. Uh, but my wife does keep that to a, a, about a week, maybe a little bit more than a week. It depends on the trip. So, uh, so yes, I do travel around the world quite a bit, but uh, when I'm home, I, I try to be home. So I am home right now. I'm home until, uh, until the next event, which is in Portugal in September. So it's a good time to be home. And, yep, and how many, how many countries? Well, I've been to, I mean, depending on how you count countries, um, but at least on the UN list, I've been to every country. So finished the last country actually in, um, in February of this, this year. So I, I saw the, uh, the post. I'm fairly sure you were in a country when a country was being no longer. Yeah. A country. I mean, so there's a whole debate about this. Um, and, and I'm not going to get into the specifics, but, uh, uh, you know, there are people that basically say, you know what, my uh, my apartment is a country and they define they define it as a country. Yeah. And, that, you know, so when you get down to that level, there are thousands of countries. Um, I don't. I, I So yeah. that's why you, you eventually have to kind of just settle on a list and say, OK, well, let's go on United Nations uh, voting members. And there's one hundred and ninety three United Nations voting members. So. On that list, I finished. I uh, finished that with Libya, which was the, the the where I went this February. Now I'm I'm working off of a broader list. Like there's another list called the TCC list, and that that includes 330 countries, yeah. and I'm up to 265 on that. So, so yeah, so I'm starting to go oh, to wow. do obscure places like Lord Howe Island, which you know belongs to Australia, but not a lot of Australians even realize that it's a place. Uh, so I was just there a couple weeks ago, and okay. and um, yeah, I mean, I just just random off the wall places that uh, that don't normally get um, get attention as much, uh, but by different standards are considered to be countries or at least territories. Um, so you know, like I, I have plans to go to uh, Saint Pierre Miquelon, which is a, a French, you know, exclave in in North America. It's like an island. Um, you know, that's, that's considered to be a territory, but it's part of France, technically speaking. So it's not its own country. So little things like that. So that's kind of like Réunion, which is... That is considered, that's on the TCC list. And I've been to Réunion Island, which is yeah. it's a beautiful place. Um, so more more French than France. It's got the most weird. shock attacks in the world. It's weird to say that, but it's it's more French than, than France. Uh it's the longest. It's the longest um, local commute in the yeah, world. Yeah, I, I have a story about that. It, there was a there was one of the a SharePoint friend from Tunisia, and she left her passport yeah. in a uh, pearl store, and was freaking out because it turns out, of course, there's no Tunisian consulate anywhere near there. The closest one is in France, mm -hmm. and you know she's thinking, okay, I need oh, to get my, I get, I need to get a new passport. Um, but she would have to travel to the other side of the world from Reunion Island um, to be able to get a new passport issued because there was no local consulate or anything like that. Now, fortunately for her, the next day we showed up at that same Pearl store and they go, oh, here's your passport. You left it here. And so so everything was OK. But it, it opened my <laughs> eyes to the fact that, yeah, when you, you know, you go to these overseas territories just to travel back there she would have incredible problems right because they you know it's you have to travel with id and she didn't have her passport so yeah that's not a situation no i i, I it's one of the reasons why not a lot of people realize this but <clears throat> americans are allowed to have two active passport books and then one passport what we call a passport card so i've got all three and and i take them yep. with me just in case i do lose mine um i've got a backup well i've got two backups but the other one is 
the yeah. card you can only use from Mexico and Canada. It's a long story, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a side passion of mine. It's 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 related to a lot of the the IT conferences that I've spoken at, which. Um, at this point, I'm up to 303 co uh, conferences uh, over the past two decades that I've spoken at, including, I think, at least 10 in South Africa. I need to check my uh, statistics on that. But um, Yeah. So 303, you've, you've done almost a conference a day for an entire yeah. year. Yeah. Are you trying to like get like the world book of records in, i don't think i don't think get us uh, like follows that? that one they're they're off at the pub somewhere and they you know they've got a they've got a really restricted list yeah. but but i have i do like um one of the statistics that i follow because what, once you once you've been to every country in the world you realize there's actually a fairly decent number of people that have been there there's actually somewhere around 400 and um you know, you try to start to distinguish yourself in different ways. And one of the ways that I've been doing it is um, mm -hmm. I believe, and I haven't been able to verify or at least uh, say yes or no to this, but I believe that I have spoken in more countries than anybody else. So I think I'm up to about, I'm up to about oh, 90 that's cool. um, UN countries that I've spoken at out of the 193. Um, and I don't believe that there's anybody else that's, that's done that. I think, but, well, that's our tagline yeah, to sure. promote this show the most, you know, traveled speaker yeah. in the world. Yeah, I mean, you know, Joel us. might come back and, and complain about that. But technically speaking, and I know this is a fact. Yeah, Guess I who's next on the show? More countries than Joel has. And if he, if he, because uh, I keep, I keep the same spreadsheet. I've got a column for Joel there because I, I, I track the same stuff for him. So, um, but yeah, there's, there's a, uh, I do kind of, I, I, I enjoy going to more off the, off the beat places to speak. Uh, because you actually yeah. get a more engaged audiences in some cases. And a lot of times like they're used to the, the big conferences being Absolutely. in major locations. Like in Africa, generally speaking, you're going to have your conferences down in South Africa, or you might have them in Kenya, or, you know, occasionally uh, or mm. Egypt. Right. So if you're looking at the whole continent, uh, yeah. but it's nice to be able to speak in like, you know, Republic of Congo, which I did an event there. Um, it's nice to be able to speak in Nigeria. You know, I did an event there with, uh, you know, Eddie Fatu's group. So it's, it, you know, I try to get outside of the, the, the normal, normal places where there's events and, uh, and speak to smaller communities that, that just don't get, uh, that don't get events as often. Rwanda was a really fascinating experience because they, they actually are really, really um, big in tech there. There's, there's a, there's a very strong tech community in Rwanda yep. that, uh, that I didn't realize was there. That's also heavily female. It's, you know, you're so used to these conferences being, you yeah. know, 90% male and it's the diff it's the opposite in Rwanda. It's like 70% female. So it's, 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 it, it was interesting to experience that kind of thing in, in, in different places. So, so I do, it's I fun. do enjoy getting a chance to speak in, in places outside of the norm. Let's put it that way. I have to ask, have you tracked how many um, vaccines and injections you've had <laughs> al along the way? Because there must have been a lot. I'm just thinking DRC and uh, monkeypox at the moment. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I actually, um, so monkeypox kind of came about after I was in the places that have monkeypox. So I don't have a monkeypox vaccine. Um, I could get it um, if I wanted to. There's actually a, uh, like a, a clinic nearby here in San Francisco uh, that, that offers it. And I may do it if I go back to those places because I, I have a travel clinic that I go to and they will occasionally just load me up on what I'm overdue on. And the last time I went there, I had three shots in one arm and three shots in the other arm. <laughs> oh, wow. So it was, I was, <laughs> the, I was just like, let's, the get hazards of traveling. let's get it over with. Let's just get all these in. <laughs> And so, yeah, I, I have been, uh, I have had, I think I have everything except for um, Japanese encephalitis. Um, I didn't get that one because you have to kind of go deep into the jungles oh of Cambodia to, for that to make sense. And uh, the latest one is monkeypox. But but the next time I go, you know, I, I may just say, you know, just just give me those two. <laughs> time. Yeah, I'll yeah, just, take just, the just you know, yeah. come on, I'll do shots of these things. Give me that encephalitis cocktail. I mean, I'm going to Myanmar in, in, after uh, Bangkok in, in November, so I have to check. And if, if it is a, an issue out there, 
um, I'll just go ahead and get the, uh, the the latest cocktail or what that is. But you know, it's it's part you. It's much better to you know, have a few you know side effects from a vaccine than to suffer. I, I saw a guy who, I saw a guy with uh, to uh, that That's had uh, malaria, and you do not want to get malaria, man. This this guy was in this was in uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, but he was uh, he was really really out of it. So I actually carry a mosquito net with me as well when I when I travel to Africa. Yeah. And I always what's interesting. So I buy mosquito nets. They're fifteen dollars on Amazon here, and I bring them to Africa and the, and then I leave them with a local. You know, just it's just something I can do. Just yeah. It also reduces my baggage when I'm coming home. But um, but you know, it, it's a number one thing. Well, that's it's a number one thing to, to travel with if you if you're traveling to some of these places a mosquito net because uh, you you want to keep away from all the creepy crawlies. Absolutely. Uh, talking about travel, I'm looking at this picture of Porto, where you will be speaking at Collab Days yes. uh, in 28 days, um, and that looks pretty. I'm epic. excited because I've only actually ever been to Lisbon. I've been to Lisbon like eight times. Yeah, and uh, I have not had a chance to explore areas outside of Lisbon, and of course, everybody talks about Porto, so uh, it is high on my list. Um, I've been meaning to get there for a while, and so yes, the organizers this year decided to do it in Porto instead of Lisbon, and uh, good on them because uh, I, I'm very excited about that. So uh, I will be there. Yeah, the, it looks yeah. fantastic. Sampling all and the, uh, the Portuguese drink wine named after the place. <laughs> yeah it's 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 almost like <laughs> where are these guys yeah it's the portuguese are really really you, you, as you know the portuguese are fantastic people and it's a really great place uh, um i i'm i'm a big fan i'm a big fan of the food i'm a big fan of the the people uh lisbon is it's it's kind of interesting because if you've been there it's um it's like a sister city of san francisco because it, it has the it has the rolling hills. Okay. It has a bridge that looks exactly yeah. like the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, same color. Oh, right? wow. Like, the, I think the story is they saved some of the paint from when they built the Golden Gate Bridge, and then they brought it over to Portugal and they built yeah. it. So, uh, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's kind of our sister city there, and it's uh, it's just fantastic. The food is great. The people are great, and you know. You, you get around, you walk around through the hills, just like just like with San Francisco, just like we were doing last night, walking the hills of San Francisco, my wife and I, when we were taking out um, our friend from Croatia. So he came to visit. This looks fantastic as well, because I'm looking at the prices for hotels, and it's like between 70 and 100 euro a night, which is yeah. plenty affordable. The city looks incredible. Like you said, the food is fantastic. The people are fantastic. I, you know, yeah, now you know why it's inundated with tourists. Portugal to is is a is a very popular place for American expats actually right now. So like people uh, leaving the U.S. to go to Europe, they'll a lot of times they'll go to Portugal. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah it's, well, the golden visa is very. We'll go very and live easy there. The cost uh, of living is them. really low. Um, uh, if you get even even if you get if you get outside of Lisbon and Porto as well too, you know it's 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 just ridiculously cheap um, to live. So yeah, it's a, it's a great place. And then you're gonna go from the culture of Porto to the culture of Milton Keynes, <laughs> Bletchley Park, uh, the UK. Yeah, yes, <laughs> Bletchley yeah, Park. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm excited about doing that. That's uh, that's a great event from what I've heard uh, over the years. Um, they really take care of their speakers, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and, and of course, it's got a fascinating history uh, from a cryptography perspective. Um, you know, they broke Enigma there. Um, so, yeah. It's, yep. You're going to be presenting or talking right yeah, in front exactly. of that machine. So we did the show with um, um, Brett uh, yeah. Lonsdale, um, and he gives the whole breakdown. And I'm like, yep. that's fantastic. If you don't know Bletchley Park. Bletchley Park is um, where the uh, code breaking originally occurred during World War II. Um, they Benedict yeah, Cumberbatch. <laughs> if you've watched that movie, you know all about it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, the in fact the the Alan Turing bomb, uh, B O M B O M B E bomb, uh, is the uh, the computer that uh, decrypted the uh, Enigma codes during World War II, and uh, and that is there in the museum, working. Uh, you can actually see it operating. Yeah, oh, which is absolutely incredible to see. And it's, and it's in situ um, 
in the hut where it actually took place as well, which is just, you get goosebumps so cool. like looking at this thing. I mean, my, my kids don't, they're just like, what's, <laughs> what are these drums spinning? Yeah. You know? um, yeah, but yeah. yeah, you get goosebumps uh, seeing that thing. So, um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'll yeah, be there. Yeah, I'll see it's going to be exciting. I, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it as well too. But uh, um, yeah, it's it's it'll be it'll be um, my first time to Bletchley Park. Uh, you know, of course, I, I know about the history of it, but uh, it, it's going to be exciting. And I've heard a lot of great things, so I'm looking forward to that. I can't wait, and I'm looking forward to your session. Um, AI is hacking you. No. that's clickbaity. <laughs> What's going well, on? Well, as you probably know, you you have to kind of. You, you, there's a there's a science to creating the right title that gets uh, that gets uh, accepted to events. Um, so yes, it's a bit clickbaity, yeah. and it just so happens to include uh, you know two of the uh, the main topics that that are well accepted nowadays. One is AI, <laughs> and, and the other one is AI. cybersecurity. And one so, is a cybersecurity. Um, but it, I I you know it's <laughs> it's actually. Um, pretty well received I've, I've gotten good feedback on this session uh i started doing it just less than a year ago uh and i keep having to update it which is what's what's kind of fascinating about this topic is it's constantly changing um the cyber criminals are getting mm. more and more sophisticated in how they use ai tools and there's constantly these, these stories about how the cyber criminals are you know using ai to hack different different uh, organizations so i'm trying to include those in my presentation and uh, uh like one example this is this this was fascinating but there was a uh, a hacker organization that created a bunch of um uh, deep fake videos of key executives within their company mm -hmm. and they they sent a zoom invite to a uh, a member of the bank that was you know associated with the financial part of it that could do bank transfers and that Zoom invite, when he joined that Zoom meeting, he was the only human on the meeting. Everybody else was an AI uh, deepfake. So they were all talking. Yeah. They were all um, uh, telling him that, hey, we need to do a bank transfer of 200 million Hong Kong dollars to this account. And he, he took the bait and he did the transfer. And uh, you know, of course, it turns out that that, that was the, the cyber criminal's bank account, and he was not supposed to do this. But uh, but you know, to his credit, I mean, nobody had really faced this situation before, where there's videos just like we're seeing right now. It's like I'm talking to you, but it's not you. It's a deep fake of you that someone has generated because they were able to just take 30 seconds of video of you that exists on the internet and create a deep. And that's all it takes. Approximately eh? 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Of, that's all you need to create a deep fake. So there's enough video of me out there doing podcasts and things like that. You can easily make a deep fake of me saying that, uh, you know, that I hate it, hate the spring box or something, you know, even though I don't. <laughs> I would Ooh. never say that. Yeah. What just oh, happened? Are you on the call, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually. <laughs> oh, no. You breached. No, I, I, Michael I, pre-recorded this. <laughs> I, as I was saying to you guys earlier, that's the only the only rugby uh, jersey I have is a Springboks jersey. So I very much nice. don't hate the Springboks, but you know someone could deep fake that, and then uh, you know I would get in you know I would get in trouble with all my South African fans. So um, so it's interesting like how that's evolving and the the techniques that they're using to kind of get at your uh, get at your data and improve you know things like ransomware attacks and and make it look a lot more realistic when they send you out the, the message that comes from your bank, you know, click on this link and enter your credentials in. Mm -hmm. So, so um, yeah, it's it, people and people, people fall for AI fakes all the time now, not just the, the cyber criminal stuff, uh, but you know, they'll repost, Oh, look at this. There's these blackberries that turn into birds or something. It's obviously an AI video, or at least if you know how, how that stuff gets generated, yeah. but you know, people fall for it because it looks very realistic. So we, yeah. I mean, Trump the other day uh, fell for, um, he was like, look, all my fans are Taylor Swift uh, fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I won't, like I won't, I won't drag, I won't drag us through like, American Woo! politics, but yeah, suffice it to say, there's the deep fakes uh, also, yeah, get involved with the, uh, the uh, American political system, so. I um, saw something on LinkedIn the other day where they had like um, the younger version and the older version uh, of the same person. 
and I first was looking at it, it was like there's Michael Jackson and then an older version of Michael Jackson and then their very young version of Michael Jackson all in one. And then they had like Mel Gibson and, and went through that. And I was like, okay, we're starting to get to a place now where yeah. things are going to get yeah, weird. Yeah, we're, we're pretty much already there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's getting weird and it'll get weirder. But yeah, it's, it's, it, it, I mean, it has the effect of making people just question anything that they see right because you your your question is this a deep fake is this real yep. um you know and it's it's i mean the tools that are out there are fascinating and they're you know they're great to use them you know for for good but just like with anything people are going to use these these tools for uh uh cyber criminal activities so just be always be cautious don't click on links um, even if you're expecting something, don't click on the link. Go straight to the website. You know that's what I always tell people. So, yeah, yeah. Now, Michael, um, I mean, aside from this amazingly well-traveled uh, speaker at conferences and this great consultant, I know that you also um, have been involved a lot as an author, right? Uh, the SharePoint Unleashed uh, series, etc. Um, are you still authoring at the moment? <laughs> Uh, I didn't pay you to say that for the record, Craig, but thank you. No, you um, didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> Here comes the plug. No. You know, the, the honest truth is, is that um, it was a lot easier back in the day. In the early, you know, 2000s when I, when I wrote the, I wrote the first book, I think it was 2001. And over the years, I would, I would, I would write several books. And I, I did end up writing, I think, a total of 20 different ISBNs that, like, to my, to my, that have my name on it. Um, but the last one that uh, that I wrote is about was about six years ago, because back in the day you would write, let's say you'd write something on SharePoint 2003, you could uh, pretty much know that that wasn't going to change for five years or so. Like if you install SharePoint 2003, it's going to act exactly like you've written it for the next five years until the next version comes out until. 2007 or something and then you write a book on 2007 so it was much easier to write something that uh that would be accurate nowadays as as you guys are probably familiar with you know you 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 do something or you write some documentation on how to do something in sharepoint online and microsoft moves the settings gear or something or they change this and they've deprecated this feature and they've added this other feature and so in some cases you've got you know only a few weeks or a few months where there's, you know, that things work the way that you expect them to. So we got to some point where it was just like, listen, this is, you know, the, the days of these big books on, on one topic. Um, it's not that they're completely gone, but if you look at the, at, if you look at the books that are out there today, it's mostly to be blunt, it's mostly AI generated junk. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, the people are, oh, yeah. are publishing oh, books yeah. uh, on, on, let's say, SharePoint um, that are just, you know, you can tell the, a, a lot of times they're just fake authors. They're not even real authors. Like, I pretty much know most of the people that would be writing books in, in this area. And I had to, I, someone was asking for a recommendation of a book and I couldn't, I couldn't give them some of my super old books, right? I was like, okay, this is old. Let's look for what the latest is. And it took me a while to find something that was actually from a real author that was relatively recent um, on, on the technology. So, so the long, that's a long answer to your question to say that, no, I haven't, I haven't done books in a while. And I don't really miss those days because uh, that was a lot of work. And I didn't have uh, LLMs to help me out. <laughs> so. Well, that that was exactly where my question was going to. Like, and now with with AI, are you just getting AI to generate books for you? But, yeah. uh, I, uh, I mean, I certainly do leverage AI in my day to day, um, but prim primarily, not primarily. I, I use it for actually for PowerShell. I, I find it quite useful. You know, you say, yeah. It, yeah, oh, yeah. I need a PowerShell awesome. that does this. And to be fair, it doesn't always do it yeah. right the first time. In fact, 90% of the time, it doesn't work right off the bat. But yes, yeah, yeah, you, have, you to have to tweak it. it. You have to know what you're doing to be able to tweak it. So there's that. But just the the base, yeah. like, okay, give me, you know, base script that'll do this. It's fantastic for that. Uh, and I also use it. Yeah, I, I also use it to just, it. you know, to, to send dad jokes and memes to my daughter, you know, that are much, <laughs> which sounds silly, but, you know, like I was, she asked me, oh, can you bring me uh, a Starbucks matcha latte, you know, back from Starbucks? And I was walking back 
And so I brought it back from her. And of course, I, I tell ChatGPT to, to make a uh, an image of a matcha latte walking through Mordor. And so I sent that to her. It's actually quite good. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course, she's like, yeah, oh, good. God, Dad, we'll stop this. But, um, but you know, I mean, I've upped my, my dad joke game with uh, ChatGPT, which I, I you know, I'm, I'm quite proud of that. Nice. Oh, um, it's Stephen fantastic! Man, idea, <laughs> the kids are like, "Oh my god!" I <laughs> uh, just a side note: um, your Microsoft SharePoint 2010 Unleashed I gave to one of our SharePoint administrators back in the day, and then he came to see you at SharePoint Saturday Cape Town. And I've never seen another man look <laughs> at another man that way before. And you signed that book for him, and he still got it. So shout out Moppy if you're watching oh, yeah, the show. Moppy, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, you I know I, I I I'll, I'll go I'll go one step further. That I, I did a I did a conference in Kiev um, uh, a few years ago, and uh, I was aware, you know, that because they usually send us these translated versions of our books. Like so, I, I know when when uh, like I, I got a translated version of SharePoint Unleashed into Russian. Okay. Um, Which you don't. Yeah, need yeah, because I just you speak, can Russian. speak Russian. So I was actually presenting in Russian in Kiev. Now it's a nowadays i'm actually learning ukrainian but this is a different but you know it's a long story but of course in the big cities in the soviet union most people spoke russian what have you in kiev uh most people understand russian and definitely at the time it was normal to converse in russian so i did my presentation in russian and after i was done with it i was aware that the sharepoint book was translated in russian but one of the guys at the event starts handing me he hands me the sharepoint unleashed translated into russian so i i sign it in russian which is challenging if you've ever done cyrillic in uh, in um in yeah. written form but that's another story so i sign it yeah reading yeah. is hard there's enough. uh there's a whole story about about if you take it so um it's actually a Serbian word written in, in Cyrillic, but it was a, a Serbian word for bat or something like shishmish. But when you write it in Cyrillic, it just looks like doo -doo 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 -doo, a bunch of lines. Anyway, I'm, I'm going off topic. So he brings that and I know about that. But then he started to bring a bunch of my other books that were also translated to Russian. I wasn't even aware that these existed. Like the publisher didn't didn't give them to which were they oh, yeah. supposed to do. So either these were bootlegged versions, <laughs> which is possible. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, and so I signed it, like you know, six you, books you, or something to, for this guy. <laughs> and I, I keep thinking, I was like, did he keep them? Because, you know, I mean, I, I do keep one copy of each volume and one copy of each translated version. And there was there was a good, you know, at least a dozen languages that were that were translated over the years. And it's kind of cool to see your book in, in you know, Mandarin and in, in Polish and in Turkish and what have you. But uh, but suffice it to say that that bookshelf that I've got it on, you know, it's not like I'm taking them out. So, you know, <laughs> I do wonder, like yeah. someday, you know, someone's going to throw them out. Maybe my daughter. <laughs> Casual reading on a Saturday afternoon. Huh? Yeah, yeah, the, the Turkish version, version of right? ISA. SharePoint Unleashed. I, no, like the Turkish one is ISA 2006 Unleashed. So yeah, if you're really into. Oh yeah, wow, Unleashed. Yeah, it was, Unleashed but they well, that's ISA. the thing though. They translated. They don't keep the same naming convention. So they'll um, like the Spanish one of the exchange book that I wrote was La Biblia. So it's like the Bible. <laughs> like the Bible, oh, my, exchange Bible. Okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, some poor schmuck had to go again. These are before LLMs and some poor schmuck was going through and translating all of this technical, just, Every you know, jargon and, you know, oh man, I, I don't, I don't, I don't envy those people. So there's probably more work than we, we did putting into the books to begin with. I'm looking at this uh, Waterstones list of Michael Knoll and it's SharePoint 2010, 2013, yeah. 2007. And then there's an odd one. See it like it. Do I don't it. think that's me. <laughs> and it's Michael no, and Manila. No, no, no. This is no. this is somebody. Okay, no, 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 Raymond Oren. So that's probably that might that's even be an, an AI generated one. <laughs> so where they're taking taking names of existing authors, I'm gonna have to like do a cease and desist or something. Achieving oh, your dreams. Yeah. Award. Hey, I'm not authors. getting any checks for that. So. <laughs> you need. I was like, 
Tell me about this new party going down. I will say, by the way, even six years after I stopped writing this, I still am getting some residual checks from this. So, but we're talking like a thirty dollar check. <laughs> so, but I'll take it. I cash. Hey, it's like it's like it. Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> in that episode where he's going in and he has to sign all these checks. Uh, at least, by the way, it's not it, it's not an actual physical check. It will get directly deposited. So. We've mostly moved beyond that, even in the States, even though we were nice. woefully behind with uh, paper checks for quite some time. So I can remember still taking a picture of um, a check to deposit. Yeah, it. well, that was that's actually a relatively like, new thing. It, so if I do, I mean, you still will occasionally get a paper check, but at least I don't have to go to the bank now. So, yeah, you can take a take a picture of it nowadays, So, which 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 is a funny story, because the bank that. I primarily use was the victim of a uh, cyber ransomware attack. Uh, going back to uh, the AI's hacking oh thing, they were down for two weeks. <laughs> so, yeah, oh you would imagine with people taking pictures of checks and sending them through how <laughs> fraught with fraud that must be. Well, but, yeah, the check system. We'll leave still that for ex- another the check topic. system still exists. <laughs> That's the thing. That's you know we're. Um, we can be advanced in some things, but we're it, it, we're kind of it's it's like Japan in that way, where you know they're super advanced and they have all this advanced stuff, and then they use floppy disks for their high speed trains, right? Um, oh, wow. so yeah, yeah, uh, it, it, uh, it's yeah, the same course. way in the financial sector. There's still areas of the financial sector. At least they're not. This was the thing up until maybe eight years ago. They used to fly the checks around, put them in airplanes, and fly big you know, crates of checks in between different metropolitan areas because they uh, needed to have that. the physical check at the actual bank. And people, it was great for you if you were getting your pilot's yeah. license because when you were working on getting your pilot's license, you could get, you know, they would allow you to fly checks because nobody cares if the checks, you know, well, I mean, they probably care, but it's not as big of a deal as crashing and killing people while you're just, you're just killing exactly. a bunch of paper. Uh, the banks get upset at you, but otherwise... I mean, that was the whole point behind that uh, that fugitive uh, catch me if you can guy. He realized that the routing, you have to send a check if it was routed from San Francisco, it has to go to New York, so it would take seven days. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that it, whole thing. It, it was a deal back then. But now they at least will allow you to electronically confirm them. So, ooh, hey, we're, we're joining the modern age. And um, I mean, you know, it, it, there's little things like that. I mean, the, the whole, you've, if you've come to the States, a lot of people get freaked out by the, you know, like you give your credit card at the restaurant and they take it back and, and you don't know what they're doing with it. And then they bring it back and you have to sign it. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, but now like at well. least we're mostly yeah. NFC payments, at least in the major cities. Like you can just use your, uh, cool. yeah, you tap, your, so tap your, yeah. your Apple phone and stuff. In fact, I was using that for quite some time recently. Well, relatively recently, I remember I was in South Africa and I was checking out at a uh, at one of the grocery stores, and I saw the little sign for the NFC payments thing. And I, I maybe it was relatively new or something, but they go they go okay, well it's this many rand or whatever. And I take my wa- my my uh, my Apple Watch out and I beep it on the thing, and the cashier her mind was blown. She brings everybody over from the whole place. They're all looking at this. They're like, what? What is this? They've never seen this before. It was, and that was it. Was yep. still it was relatively new in the states, but it apparently had come to South Africa. And I saw the sign that was there. I saw that they took NFC payments, and I think it's probably now very normal. But at the time, it just blew them away. They couldn't believe it. And this was uh, like not this. This was when I was out in uh, Kruger. I went out to Kruger, uh, uh, so it was like yeah. in the in the in the oh. sticks of South Africa. This wasn't a, a big city or anything. They thought I was trying to cheat them. Yeah, they'll still be surprised <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, do yeah. that today. They thought I was trying to cheat them or something. They're like, <laughs> no, and they're, like, they're going to bring the manager over. No, I'm spayed. I'm like, it's good. I'm telling you. And anyway, it's it will still be a story. It was a yeah, guy that paid with his yeah, watch. Probably, it yeah, probably. Still be a story is, today. This is again. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting part of. I, I, I don't know if you've been up to Kruger before, but it's a fascinating place. But, um, so every South African has gone to Kruger I was going to say, 17 yeah, times I, 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 who am I talking to? But yeah, <laughs> I, I had a good time. There. My kid's favorite place in the world. Yeah, such a nice place. <laughs> There's what what what's fascinating to me too is uh, is uh, my nephew and I was traveling with me. We stayed like right next to the park, 
but in like a, it's like a little village right up. I, I, if I had a map, I could see what the name of it is. But it's right next to the park. But the the fence that they build in the park is not like the biggest fence in the world, and so the animals will come across, mm-hmm. and uh, and there's you know animals just wandering through this community. And, um, um, occasionally they'll even get like lions that, <laughs> that escape. So, so, uh, you have to be careful because they'll just be wandering. Yeah. You, you lions. get that a, a lot along the, uh, crocodile river where the animals just come across the river into places like Marloth park and, uh, yeah, yeah. but it's wonderful. You, you don't even need to be in the, the game reserve. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what it was. And, and, and it's, and, and I stayed, uh, I stayed at, uh, uh, at this Airbnb of this, uh, of a, a, a Dutch woman, and uh, she was she was fascinating. She was great, but she basically she was like, "Okay, you're going to be my husband today. We're going to drive in. We're going to get the residence rate." <laughs> and so we drove into Kruger, <laughs> and she's like, "Just keep your mouth shut because they'll tell if you have the accent." So I'm just sitting there, I'm like, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. "Yeah, just speak was, Russian, you'll yeah, be yeah, one." Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, that was a different thing. She did have diplomatic plates, um, so that. <laughs> It was, it was. She was a fascinating person. Uh, turns out her son is actually uh, working at a Silicon Valley place down here. She, she came to visit later on, so I, I showed her around San Francisco. But it just shows that the world is uh, it's fascinatingly interconnected like that. So, you know, Ariana Huffington said um, in a podcast the other day. She said, uh, "Live life as if it was rigged <laughs> in your favor." Yeah, that's. Um, that's and I love that. I, quote. I could see that. Yeah. I, I, I do enjoy. I mean, I, I, I do find um, the, like the, the, what was originally, let's say the SharePoint community that's kind of evolved into, you know, obviously branched out quite a bit, but um, it's one of the, the better communities to be involved in. And, you know, there's a lot of really fascinating people, a lot of people that, um, that, uh, you know, all over the world and, and speaking yeah. at all these conferences all over the world, like I've done over the past couple of decades, you know, you really get a chance to, to kind of experience uh, the, lo- you know, the, the local flavor of things like people will show you, you know, this is, you know, this is how we traditionally do things. They'll take you to the places outside of the tourist areas and, and they'll show you, you know, stuff that you don't get to see otherwise. So, or, you know, you experience a real local braai, right? As opposed to just, you know, eating at the Hilton or something, and you know, like in South Africa. So it, yeah. you get to experience the Anthony Bourdain Yeah, exactly. With, without you know, having to be parts Anthony unknown. Bourdain, right? I mean, you, so it's, 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 yeah. it's fascinating to me. And, 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 and I love interacting with people, you know, like I said, you know, just, just two days ago, guy i know from croatia is in san francisco and i said okay we'll go out so last night we went uh, we went out in the town and i showed him around and uh, we walked through chinatown and north beach and i got to play tourist in my own city um and you know so show some people around but yeah same with you guys if you guys come to san francisco you're always welcome and i'll show you around um but it's well, on the you we're know we're looking forward to having a bra with you in your springbok jersey oh uh, yeah Hopefully taking on New Zealand at the same time. <laughs> There's a game in November, boys. We can I was just go in New around. Zealand. I have a lot of friends there as well, too. I, I love the Kiwis. But yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Uh, yeah. Hobbits. Yeah. But uh, I do, I, again, to this day, and to be fair, I've never gotten the speaker uh, jersey that was a rugby jersey, and uh, it, uh, it, it, at least not at a New Zealand conference. I did at a South African conference. So. The only uh, the only rugby jersey I currently own is a Springboks one, so and it has my name on. Next it. time it's going to be some Drickus <laughs> Duplessis gloves, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I do hope to get back there. It's been too long since I've been to South Africa, and I know you guys have an event, uh, but I did already have some some plans on that. But uh, uh, hopefully, if if we know a little further in advance, I can plan around around an event because uh, it's one of my favorite well, places uh, to visit is South Africa. So I do, I do hope I can get back there pretty soon. You can put it in your calendar for next year. We'll run it again. Uh, and we'll probably announce it at the last uh, day. Once we've, well, I mean, if I know them like the month and the so, approximate date, then yeah, I can, I can pencil that in and I can make sure nothing else gets planned around that. But, uh, um, 
what's funny is I, my my conflict I is think... actually in Africa, but it's 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 a hard conflict. Like I will be out. So um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Oh well, we'll we'll let you know. It's going to be probably uh, October twenty twenty five. So. Uh, let us know. We'll no, move the whole event. You don't have to do that. But so. if I know roughly when it is, I can I can just block it out of my calendar and say I'm going to South Africa. But but I I do intend to go back. It's been too long, and uh, and there's other places that I want to visit around there that that I haven't had a chance to visit. I mean, I've really you know I mean Cape Town, Joburg, and then uh, you know um, I did Lesotho uh, from Dur- well Durban uh, Lesotho. I did, uh, um, well, when it was called Swaziland, I think it's East Swatini now. Yeah, I did, I did that. Oh, yeah. 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 That's right, yeah. Easy. So, uh, but that's, that was part of the going to every country in the world thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, didn't you also, we did it a while back. We, we also drove up. Did you go via Nasna? Um, I, I didn't, I didn't, George, get a, I didn't get a chance to go on that one. Um, I've been meaning to, uh, okay. like, the road trip thing. Um, but it just never worked out timing wise. Um, but yeah, I mean, especially if you guys are doing that again, I'd love to do that. Yeah. So the collab days is, is we, it's a week. So it's from Monday oh. to Friday, Monday, Joburg, Wednesday, Durban, Friday, Cape Town. So easily can yeah. fit that yeah. in. A road yeah. Trip. If there's going to be a road trip, so, all the better. Yeah, I'll certainly uh, sign up for that. There's, there's nothing better. It's, it's, uh, um, yeah, there's it's South Africa has a special place in, in, in my heart. It's it was one of the early events that I did. I think I did um, uh, 2008 was I think the first time I was down there. Actually, yeah. brought my wife in for that. That's when I realized she is not as much into the long travel as, as I am because South. It's a, if, it's a long you, way away. Like when I took my family yeah, to San Francisco, they were like. So the, the antipathy hours? of San Why? Francisco, the exact other side of the earth from where I'm at right now, uh, you yes. pop out on the ocean off the coast of Durban. <laughs> okay, so it is as yes. about as far as you can uh, as you can go. So it takes a while to get. Yeah, there. You, you start coming yeah. back on yourself. But there are getting, there's now so. it's possible. It used to be you had to take at least three airplanes to get there. Now you can take two. You can go San Francisco, Dubai, Dubai, mm-hmm. direct to Cape Town or to Joburg or to Durban even. So on Emirates. Yeah, yeah. we did the Dubai, Durban. Um, and what was cool was we flew over yeah. the North Pole. Mm-hmm. So it was Dubai and then, and then over. And then you only touched in America just as we went into California. Yeah, San Francisco like, to weird. Dubai, uh, depending on the route that they take, they will modify. But it will occasionally go directly over the North Pole. And they did it did that once. I took a picture yeah. of the North Pole, I mean, of the ice. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, that's what yeah. we did. And I was just like, I, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> Because like there's nothing happening yet. Like I'm so much better over well, the you, top of me. You, you start to one of the things a lot of people don't don't realize, but uh, there's all these um, backup air air strips that they have. Um, so they have to be long enough yep. to land these massive planes at. And so there's just weird places right. in the world that have enormous um, uh, air strips, right? Like Reunion Island is one of them, okay. and that's. Yeah, that's because oh, wow. when you're going on a long uh, flight, if you lose an engine, um, you need to be yeah, you need to be within say... a three hour flight of a airport that can take you uh, for an emergency. So uh, there are these there's these airstrips and oh, stuff cool. like that that are in the far north that are designed for that, that are basically, if you have some kind of a, a problem, they will land you there. And there's occasionally ones that are even like, they're not even using, I think it was a Midway Island, for example, has this big long airstrip on it. And there was a flight, uh, Hawaiian Airlines flight or something from Hawaii to Tokyo. And anyway, they had to land there. Um, so, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen because of course I imagine that's a stressful event, but, uh, but you're always within a relatively yeah. short flight or at least less than a three hour flight to an emergency uh, airstrip, which is one of the reasons, by the way, they, they don't go directly over Antarctica. Uh, so okay. when you're, when you're taking those flights, they will, they will always curve around the edge of Antarctica so that they remain within a, a relatively short flight from, from a uh, airstrip that they can land at. Yeah. From a strip. Fascinating. Yeah. You know, 
I knew this modern workplace podcast <laughs> would be full of relevant oh, information. Yeah, we may want to get back on topic. Uh, cybersecurity. Uh. <laughs> well, that's yeah, that's a good one. You know, the airlines got taken out by cra- the crowd strike incident. So there's always that we can we can. Tyler's well, that was it. Was just in the end, it was just Delta, and it was because Delta was running on some old tech. They didn't they have enough field kind of... techs to be able to go out there and plug in all those BitLocker keys. <laughs> That's... Yeah, <laughs> so something, and they, everything was running on like uh, Windows XP or something. Uh, and so, anyway, I just, they deserved I, what they got. I just brought my dog. He, my, my dog is 16 years old, so he's a, he's quite the senior dog. So I brought him oh, in wow. for a checkup at the vet the other day, and they left me alone in the room with, with this. Uh, I look over at the computer, and it's unlocked. And at first, I'm like, oh, come on. Guys. I mean, it's a vet place. You know, I guess they're not too concerned about that. But then I look closely. I'm like, oh, my God, it's Windows XP. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, should, yeah, yeah. should I take my dog to a different? I mean, he's 16 years old. You know, how bad can it be? I'm like, come on, guys. You know, upgrade. This is a 20 year old operating system. It's time to upgrade. <laughs> so, now, when the, when the computer's uh, older than your dog. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, that, you know how old that computer is. Oh, yeah. Right? That was, an, that like, was an old. It takes old three days computer. to boot up. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, you know, at least they, they, at least they don't yeah. suffer from crowd strike issues because they're, you know, there's no way you're going to get one of those agents on the, on that machine. I mean, that that thing's still got one across. Uh, it, you know? I've, I've seen some old stuff. I mean, you, you working in IT, you, you run into that kind of stuff all the time. It's like, what are you guys doing with this with this machine running Windows 2000? <laughs> oh, we, we ran into an installation of SharePoint. 2003 a little while ago oh. and that I would that took me back <laughs> I was oh, like, what, wow. what is going on here <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's where Where's you have my to front page extensions <laughs> oh, nice <laughs> nice it was probably running it was probably running the backup script that we wrote for the book <laughs> probably <laughs> we, yeah. we wrote a script that would take a STS ADM. STS Edmund one. STS yeah, STS ADM. ADM. We yeah. wrote a we wrote a, a, a VB script that would that would take STS ADM and would back up all your site collections out nightly, and um, and it turned out, mm-hmm. yeah, it turned out like that script. was used in a lot of corporations uh, t- for their backup solution. Yep. And I was like, you guys need to go out and buy something real. You know, we don't have any. <laughs> we don't have any, we're, we're we're not. Uh, there's no support on this, guys. <laughs> So, hey, yeah. hey, guys, come on. Issues. We need support. Yeah, exactly. You know, someone's going to sue Those us. Because... At, uh, SharePoint Unleashed. Hey, figure but, this boy, out. Yeah, that would, they'd just go in and look at, find all your site collections. This is pre-PowerShell as well, too, right? And uh, and then yeah. and then back them all up to flat files on uh, whatever, you know, whatever file server you're backing them up to. So Everyone used it. Everyone used it, and then we moved to PowerShell when it came around because you could get yeah, a little you bit could more do it granular. all in one line. <laughs> but I mean, the SDS admin was was in, and it was like these guys really need to sort out yeah. this SDS admin yep. thing. Yep. You know what I mean? This Which is, I mean, it was SharePoint Team Services uh, takes you back to the '90s when this this was you know when when that was that was. In fact, that's the first time I ran into SharePoint. Is it? Uh, it was a. Uh, it was on the front page CD. So. The, You'd get the CDs from Microsoft, and I was working at a company in the 90s, and, yes. and here comes the front page CD, and I'm looking at the CD, and I'm like, what is this? What is SharePoint Team Services? And uh, yeah, it was the... Yeah. That's what it was. I mean, so that was, if you were going back that, historically, SharePoint 2001, um, which was a separate tool than SharePoint Team Services, and then they merged them together in 2003, and Yeah. Yeah, now we're going way back, and and you couldn't. You it was very difficult um, to get things. I, I did have a client back in the day. We had to do. I don't know if you remember Spin Spout. It was a tool that would you you would export items out of SharePoint two thousand one. So we had to, we had a client with a two thousand one instance, and we had to spout all the documents out of it to put, be able to put it into. I think at the time it was like SharePoint twenty thirteen or something. So yeah. Yeah, now we're going oh, way back. We're showing our age. Wow. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you about my Exchange admin work back in the '90s. That was another. Uh, that's that's. Our producers are looking at us, telling <laughs> us to cut the show. Sorry, we'll keep that word for next yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. 
There's no producers. Um, Michael, thank you so much uh, for being on the show and just giving us some insight into everything Michael Knoll. I mean, uh, I can tell you, you were one of the people that I saw headlining a show back in the day and really got me involved in um, speaking. And I can tell you that you've inspired many and especially a lot of people that I know from the South African side of things. Hopefully, Moppy get, takes a picture of his sign, Michael Knoll, and posts him the comment uh, of this video. Yeah, really that's, that's great. That that's great to hear. I, I, uh, I really appreciate that. And thanks for the the accolades. It's it's been it's been a, a, a great experience. And, and I I feel I've I've gotten much more out of it than than I've been able to give. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it. I, I always enjoy that. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, again, I'll be able to speak in South Africa next year. I'm gonna I'm gonna block October of 2025 out. So, uh, so hopefully we'll make sure of it down there. And then maybe yeah, we'll it. have to include a road trip to Kruger. You know. Oh yeah, any road trip Pretend you're across South again. Africa. I, I I will absolutely. <laughs> I miss I miss real biltong too. Like just going and get some. You can't get that anywhere oh. outside of South Africa. Not the real stuff. Look, I in found London. a place. I found a place. I'll bring some. When, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's run by South Africans, and I'm pretty sure they import the cows. Um, <laughs> but I'll bring some. Okay, you can yeah. Tell I'll, me. I'll, you can tell Park. Me if it's I'm looking name. forward to it. It's got to be real biltong, man. Uh, 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 <laughs> There's a high bar. Um, I owe you big time for getting you uh, up so early on a Friday. I really appreciate it. So I'll definitely bring some biltong. Fantastic. Maybe some looking whiskey. forward to it. Excellent. Well, Michael, thank Mike, you thank so you much guys. for your time. Yeah, appreciate it. Have a good one. Great chatting. Always. Cheers, cheers, bye.